So we are now in Alcobasa, uh, which is, I believe it's famous because of its monastery. So we're gonna check it out really quick. Also, I need to look for a place to pee and then we go to the Airbnb to have dinner. I've never seen that. There's a tractor tanking at the gas station. <laughs> Funny. The hospital of Alcobasa. If you ever need a treatment and you're on vacation. small snack here at a coffee shop in Alfubasa next to the school uh, this type of school here near the center it's a bit busy on the terrace uh, the cakes look nice but I don't recommend going to the toilet they had no paper the bidet was not working so the cakes were not so interesting, were not so good. Oh, uh, yours was good. Yeah, the gluten-free one, I think it was the, what was it called? Petit four, yeah. That was good with uh, <coughs> almond. <laughs> Mine was uh, a cookie cake. It was not so good, it was quite quite bad but yeah some places are better some places are worse and it also depends on the type of cake that you're eating say that Portuguese courthouses are very beautiful. The one in Caldas de Araña was also very very beautiful. Eu... Ia... A... This is Garden School uh, João de Deus with the letters, the vowels leading up to the school. This is the Garden of Love, but it doesn't look lovely. The Garden of Love.
Is this the... Yeah, the Rio Bassa? Yeah, that might be the river that gives the name to Alcobasa. And this behind the Garden of Love, you have the public library, because who doesn't love books? Impressive. It's no wonder that it's a uh, world heritage. Really impressive. I mean, this is more beautiful than what you have in some cities here. This monastery is just in a small village here in, uh, in the middle of nowhere, near Bataya near our airbnb but not really close to anything i would say we are looking right now at one of the seven wonders of portugal funny that we just were at another wonder in ovidos this is the first ever gothic building on portuguese soil the monastery was started in the 12th century by monks of the order of sister and look at this facade it's the entrance to the church wonderful and with so many details. And if you stay at that hotel, you will have a very, very nice view. We are going to the, uh, to buy the tickets or to check the prices. It's here, the last door. Well, it was a bit expensive, 12 euros. I mean, expensive for Portuguese terms, of course. 12 euros for two tickets, but you save on parking and then you can afford these cultural things. There you have it, 12 euros for two entrances.
Once you enter this monastery, you can feel the wealth, the influence, the importance it had in the past. The first king of Portugal, Afonso Henriques, allowed the construction of this monastery with the idea of colonizing recently reconquered areas. Neo villages paid tributes to the monastery in exchange for protection and acres of land. Many of those villages nowadays have grown to become important, well-known places, such as Nazare and Ajubarota. This here was the kitchen. Even in the past, they used to have tiles in kitchens. I guess this was the table where they prepared stuff. And over there, I believe they put some wood and they lit up a fire and it would cook. Here, they could wash the dishes. Oh. <laughs> this kitchen is like two apartments or something. From the year 1752. 1752. We just were at the monks hall. So those are the numbers. This is the map of the monastery. So we're going up to the dormitories. The cloister of King Dennis, or the upper floor. Oh. A sun clock. the shadow they could know the time it is miraculous that this monastery survived the 1755 Lisbon earthquake without significant damage what was more destructive though, 
was the pillaging caused by the French troops during the Napoleonic Wars in the 19th century. The library, which had been one of the largest libraries in Portugal during the Middle Ages, was completely looted. The tombs where influential people such as kings were resting were robbed and French troops also vandalized in the monastery. Finally, in that same century, so the 19th century, in 1834, just after the Portuguese Civil War, and due to a decree by Joaquim Antonio de Aguiar that nationalized the property of monastic orders, the monks left the monastery forever. <laughs> We're going down to the other places. This is the parlatory. The monks were allowed to talk here. Other than that, they had to keep the vow of not speaking. The church has a long central nave with two shorter lateral naves in the transept and forming the shape of a Latin cross. All the naves have a height of approximately 20 meters, comprising a total of 106 meters with a set of 52 meters. This is arguably one of the largest Cistercian abbeys. Inside the church we can find tombs belonging to members of the Portuguese nobility, such as Inês de Castro or Dom Pedro I. Though it's huge, the church reflects the Benedictine search for modesty and humility, with little ornamentation, austere capitals and simple shapes. Maybe you've already noticed, but this simplicity stands in contrast with the heavily decorated facade that we saw earlier. This is due to a fire during the third French invasion, where the facade and other parts of the church were remodeled with Baroque elements. Saint Mary Falcobasa. This is called the King's Hall because you have statues of all the kings of Portugal. Now it's a republic, so it doesn't have kings, but who knows? 
Are you the next? The next king of Portugal? Well, that was it. It was actually quite impressive. So there's only one thing left in Alcobasa, and that is to visit the castle. But we've done so many things today already. <sighs> well, then we'll sleep better tonight. But we might also need to eat something because we are burning many calories today. I mean, we've been to Caldas de Araña, uh, Obidos. We drove to a place to eat. We walked four kilometers on a beach near Nazare. And now we are here in Alcobasa. <laughs> quite a lot so over there you go to the castle very charming beautiful here with a Chinese bazaar So this is the castle, or the remains of the castle. The dogs. Okay. We are up here. so that you can see it at night look at this view oh my god Okay, so I think we've visited everything that we wanted to visit in Alcobasa. We've also visited the other towns and the beach. Now, I'm not so tired, but I drank a Portuguese coffee that gives 70 points of energy to the one who drinks it. Uh, my wife didn't drink anything, like any coffee, that's why she's very tired now. So we are just gonna go to the Airbnb, I'm gonna cook something for her, and then we can rest and edit videos. Yeah, and then go to bed and tomorrow will be a new day with um, other places. Monument with grapes.
this is what we are cooking. Some uh, yes, some gluten fish packet uh, spaghetti with homemade tomato sauce with chicken uh, rosemary from Tomar from that part uh, and garlic. Yeah. So this is the product. Simple but tasty. So we just had I mean we had dinner and used the rest of the evening to edit some videos. So now we are just gonna go to bed and tomorrow Yeah, I don't know. We might visit Fatima and Pattaya. And then we also we would also like like to visit we will also like to visit Porto de Mosh. We are not going to Lisbon. Um we find that it's a bit too much. We thought better if we find a flight for a weekend we can just go to Lisbon and um move around with the tram or the buses there. It's much better.